On March 27, 2023, officers from the Fire and Rescue Department responded to a call from a child reporting that his mother, Ashley Weber, had not responded to the door for several hours. Upon arriving at the house, the officers took immediate action to extract the woman from the bathroom where she appeared to be trapped. You okay? Ma'am. She's moving. She's responsive. If I kick the door in. Yeah. Hello? Police Department of Fire. Can you need to move? Okay. There's drawers in the way. You know, I have better tools than I do. Yeah, something on the top. Let's break the door, huh? Is that her right there? Yeah. Yeah, it's her right there. Yeah, she's getting smashed. Yeah, her legs. Cut her legs or something. Anybody got anything to smash against her real quick? Nothing here. That's heavy enough to do that. Hey! You've been drinking or you've been yeah, doing drugs? Three nine, she's semi alert. Uh, right. Fires here work with her, we will need them so. After breaking down the door of the bathroom to rescue the woman, the officers observed that her unresponsive condition seemed to have been self inflicted by an act of drug taking. She was found with a lighter in her right hand and aluminum foil in her left, which had burn marks at the bottom. So you have your tin foil there, brown all over your nose. Hey, how about we be some honest here since we got kiddos that called us and you're over here passed out? It is ridiculous. You're leaving kids unattended while you're over here getting your little high fix. But that is ridiculous. So let's work with them and try to help some things out. You got any idea, ma'am? Identification, that's why. It is. It sure is. Actually, it does. They're the one that called 911. The kids that were here, they're outside right now crying because they thought you were dead. What? Yeah, that's what. Upon further inquiry about how she got to be in that state, the woman cooked up a story that seemed too good to be true. The officers are definitely not buying her story. But I'm telling you, the cops came in, we spoke with them earlier, and we explained all this to him, to the police, the actual policemen. He apparently did so. drugs, and the lady that is over these apartments, which is my best friend's mother-in-law, um, is a judge. And we explained all this to her. Like, she was here. They had all this done. Okay, but let's, so, let's focus, let's focus can on Can please, right again, can you shut right. that door? Um, I, the neighbors has been nothing besides crazy since, because, and that was because the people that owned here, apparently it was a big old drug house before I got here, and okay. I was not aware. Trying to figure out why there's aluminum foil in the bathroom. I was just in the bathroom, and apparently that's where he'd done that, right up in that shelf. So, or not the shelf, the ceiling. Like, I literally just took my medicine and was getting ready to take a shower and get my kids. How did he do it in there, and how are you not able to leave the bathroom? Sir, I just got here. We were starting to clean everything to get out. The next thing I know, I was I took my medicine. You were next thing out I know, the exactly. Not here when I'm telling so how, how, did he just leave you passed out in the bathroom? Sir, he was not here. The cops just picked him up. The right. cops just got him within him, not functioning or not functioning with them or anything. I literally opened the door, took it's a Jared Nair name on there. So when, not, when was he taken away from him? Oh, like, went on one, two o'clock. We we got here like maybe twenty minutes ago. Whenever we got here, you were passed. Are you not hearing what I said? I, I just, you were unconscious. In the I just took my medicine, right. went to the bathroom like, to pee. Yes, my it was. Yeah. I take it three times a day. Apparently, yeah. that's where he had his medicine balled up in that with a foil, a um, bag or whatever. I was literally on the pot sitting there within the time, and then the next thing I know, I was on the floor, and this has happened. So, I mean, I, I can't tell you exactly. Um, I was not willingly taking no medicine. Um, I was on the phone with my friend, and I told her I was going to call him to work because all this crazy stuff has happened. Um, all he, the owner could say was there was this squatting Mexican that stayed here, um, and that was, that it was hell getting him out. I was not aware of any of this until um, all this started happening with the landlord and them. 
for the HOA piece. And like I said, once again, um, the lady was literally a, a judge. Like, that's what she is, a retired judge. So her daughter-in-law has went to, to prison, all this crap, and she was my best friend. Um, I was not aware that this, do this place was hot. I, my dad passed away, went through a divorce, and they offered to start renting this to me um, within month, in the month. And I thought it was just a good idea to start up here, start working at Mercy Hospital, and just going from there. The woman gets into an argument with a police officer on the scene, and even asks him to leave her house. Within moments, she became all emotional, hoping to get some sympathy from other officers. Whatever it happened, is it that strong to do? Like, I, I don't know exactly what was in the bottle besides of what I heard y'all say. Shouldn't make the cats out. Not my medicine, I'm saying the stuff this powder stuff that was on my medicine in the bottle. Remember what the powder was. They said it was fentanyl, that's what he was on. Well, if it was fentanyl, you want to be breathing right now. This would be a whole different situation. That's what he did. So, it was powder form. He got it, got it right down here from the people about down below with their drug sellers. A fentanyl. So, is that what you took? Huh? Is that what you took? Sir, I didn't take it, Will. I mean, did you not just hear what I said? No, I, I walked in after the fact. Can you not yell okay. at me? So, I'm just asking. Okay. So don't, don't give me attitude either, okay? I walked in after the fact. I don't, I don't, I, I just showed up, okay? All I know is you were passed out. That's all I know. Okay, when you okay. get the rest of the story, we can talk. Because okay. you're not going to, I'm going right. to argue. So then you just keep your mouth shut then, okay? We're not, we're not talking. I'm not asking you any questions or anything. Excuse me, I can talk. This okay. is my house. All right. And actually, um, could you step outside? No. Because you can step no. outside. Uh, unless you have a warrant, you're not no, supposed to. No, I, I have a legal okay. reason to be here. Okay. So. Well, like I said, my mom, my mom is a judge. That's fine. So this is, a, this is recorded, fine. so that's fine. That is completely fine. There's okay. no reason for you to treat me like that's I'm fine. a judge. I, I just got the guy out of here that was. Good. So, you do not have to I'm be disrespectful, and neither do I. Okay. Um, who am I speaking with? Are you the paramedic? Paramedic. paramedic? Okay. Um, can I get a shirt on because I do not like treat been treated by this officer. <laughs> Like I am some freaking drug. Like I have no clue who he is, and he's not gonna come here and disrespect me in my home because okay, he's a cop. It, it has nothing, but he's not gonna sit here and act like this to me in my home. This is ridiculous. Can we do a few more questions? Get we it over with. Get a shirt we on. Can. And get everything over. We can, can but he's not gonna treat me like what, I'm. I'm an LPN to at Mercy Hospital. Like, what's your first and last name for me? My name is Ashley Weber. Okay. The officer with whom Weber got into an argument informs her she will be taken into custody because her actions endangered her kids. Weber isn't happy with this and tries to argue her way out of it. However, she is informed that she has no choice in the matter. Ashley, so here's what's gonna happen, okay? Like I said, I don't have details as to what happened or anything. There's another officer that was here before me as well as my supervisor, okay? So what I need you to do right now, what, we're, what we are gonna do right now actually, is you and I are gonna go downstairs, okay? Um, I'm gonna have you sit in my car while we get while I speak to other officers and see what what we're gonna do okay obviously we need to make arrangements for like he said you know he'd like another adult to be here with your kids you know because and, and all these things okay right. now for you to sit in my car you, you you will be in cuffs in my car okay you can't sit in the back seat of my car without without cuffs can okay per policy excuse me can y'all not come in here and sit with me I'm not no we'll, we'll have to go down there okay and, and, and your kids are down there I mean I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna cuff you in front of your kids you know, but I'll, 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 I'll have you sit on my car and your kids. I, I, I said, I saw them when I came up here, but I don't know exactly where they're at downstairs, okay? Um, um I mean, I don't feel comfortable at one end. Okay, well, not too bad. Well, we're okay. going to stand up and do a cuffs. Huh? We're going to go ahead and stand up, I don't care. We're, I don't care how comfortably you feel or not feel. Huh? We're standing up. Okay, okay. I mean, what am I going to do? What is going on, like, as far as... Can y'all explain to me what I'm getting, like, am I going to jail yes. or for what? Job, job is what? Because I took my medicine and it had been, oh, are you serious? 100% serious. This is not okay. You admitted to MSA. It's, that was in your hand. I did not admit to that. That was a lie. I do okay. a job that he just went to jail this morning. Okay. This is ridiculous. Sure is. Like, y'all. Sir, please do not be rude to me. I don't know. I'm 
I'm not. I pulled. I, 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 you want me to be rude? I could have left. Put you in front of your kids. I pulled over here so your kids aren't seeing handcuffs. That that's not being rude. That's being considerate. Not explaining to what y'all's doing. I like, just told you you're going to jail. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Like mm. y'all are sitting here saying this shit, and it had to do with him and his spitting all powder was on my medicine from the people downstairs. You like, smoke your pills, huh? I don't smoke my pills. Like y'all are not listening. <laughs> I was there when I kicked in the door. And I opened and, and y'all in. And they did not, in. you did not. I didn't let fire, you. Fire, fire tore the door off the hinges. I'm talking about this morning. We weren't here this morning. This is this afternoon. I'm talking Six about in the afternoon. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Like you're sitting here saying I said I smoked my field. That was not said either. Okay. Well, that was not I'll tell you. Said. Like, what the f is this? You know, I think inside your body or inside your cavities or anything like that? No drugs hitting up inside your body. I'm a nurse. No, I don't. Okay. Just checking your dreams or anything back there. Yeah, I don't know. Check your dreams or anything back there. We'll go this way. I'll just stay in front on the off chance you throw up, but we're not <laughs> accidentally getting me with it. Don't think you will, but. After being placed in the squad car, Weber was taken to a hospital to get medically cleared prior to being booked into jail. She was charged with two counts of child neglect, in addition to a previous warrant for neglect of family. Her children were put in the custody of another party after being checked for possible exposure to drugs. Weber's bond was later set for $100,000. While Weber was at home doing drugs, this next individual overdosed with her kids in the car. On October 21, 2023, a woman later identified as Yasmin was observed slumped in her car while it was in motion. Within moments, the vehicle crashed into a bus stop after nearly hitting other vehicles. Bystanders immediately rescued the woman from the car and found that she had three children with her, one of whom was not properly restrained. Paramedics and police were promptly summoned to the scene. It was discovered that Yasmin had overdosed on the drug oxycodone, which has the street name Blue. This explains her loss of consciousness prior to her crashing her car into the bus stop. However, as paramedics provided treatment to Yasmin, she abruptly sat up, acting hysterical, and attempted to remove the IV line. Get out. Can't leave that in you. Yeah. 
Observing Yasmin's reluctance for additional medical aid, the paramedics caution her that the counter drug administered may wear off and she might return to an overdosed state. They offer to take her to the hospital, but she declines this option as well. As Yasmin attempts to exit the ambulance, officers at the scene confront her to carry out their responsibilities. Her actions had jeopardized the safety of her children, leading to the need for further questioning. However, she defiantly takes up a combative stance and faces swift consequences for her behavior. Hey, Yasmin, there's some stuff that's gonna have to happen before you take off, right? Do you understand that? You're gonna kind of sit right here, you're not gonna... Control 1126, what district? Yasmin. You're gonna sit down. Okay, and they're fine. So you're gonna, you're not gonna go toss all your. Check it out. You're gonna cooperate. Or you're gonna get detained. You're the one smoking blues with your kids in the car. You're gonna get no sympathy from me. So you're gonna sit down and cooperate Are you with this. Are you me anyway? Yes. Okay, then doesn't matter. Cool. Get turn around. No, I. Hey. I don't see Want your kids to see you if you're thrown to the ground? No, you're not gonna Start cooperating. Get up. I'm one of the officers that carries this thing called a wrap restraint. You refuse to go in it, you're gonna get placed in it, and it sucks really, really bad. And I told you, I will. Once you start cooperating, you will. And then you said that you would just detain I just need you to call my mother. Get up, and we will work on that. Okay, get up, and we will work on that information. How can I trust you? What? How can I trust you? Because I don't want you sitting here laying with your face in a grate. And I really don't think you want your kids to see you like this either. Cool. So let's work towards a common solution and you start getting up. Perfect. Put one of your knees in. There you go. Yeah. We're coming over here. Do you have anything else? 
Pass on you. Oh. Okay, take a seat. Mother. What's your name? First of all, we have some other information we need to get. It's Yasmin, correct? Yes. Y A S M I N? Yes. What are you on paper for? I'm going to find out, so we could just do it easier. The more you cooperate with me, the more I'm willing to work with you in this part. For DUI? Who's your PO? What? Caesar. Caesar what? Laura. All right. Yasmin ends up being taken to the police station after her mother arrives at the scene of the accident to pick up her three kids. She is led to one of the holding cells and then questioned about how she got to be in the situation. As the question gets heated up, Yasmin chooses not to talk anymore, seemingly not to incriminate herself further. I don't know. I'm not going to answer that question. You're not going to answer? I'm just asking because, I mean, I mean, obviously you admitted to the blue. So I was just wondering about the, if you huff because there was all that air duster in there. You don't? I'm not. Oh, okay. That's fine. You don't have to answer. Um, <sighs> Shortly after turning down more questions, Yasmin is transported to a nearby hospital. The breathalyzer at the station provided unclear results, prompting a blood test to determine her alcohol levels and check for other potential drugs in her system. Basically, witnesses said that she was unconscious at the wheel. 
and that the car was rolling at 15 miles per hour, uh -huh. and that it did two circles out in Avenida de Mesilla on Lakeside, mm -hmm. and the car went into oncoming traffic where it did another circle, hit a curb, and then rerouted back and hit a bus stop. Uh, yeah, like, bus stop. where they sit? Yeah, where oh, they okay, sit. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was it. And okay. Um, we attempted to do a breathalyzer test, however, it came back, um, what was it, that there's some sort of interference. When I asked my sergeant, he says that's usually some sort of medical condition going on, mm -hmm. so we just wanted to get her medical clear checked out, and I'm also going to read her the consent so we can drop her. At the hospital, Yasmin is asked to consent to her blood being drawn. At first, she seems confused by the requirements, but later grudgingly agrees. I'll repeat my question. Knowing your right to refuse to consent and to have your blood drawn and tested, the possible consequences and your right to an independent test. Do you give consent to have your blood drawn and tested? If you continue to remain silent, I'll consider you have refused my request. I don't understand. No. So basically, Ms. when we had the breathalyzer, it came back uh, that there was some sort of inconsistency with it, that we needed to get you medically checked out, that there was something other than alcohol in your blood. That's why we came here to three crosses. One, to get you medically cleared, and two, to see if you would be willing to get a blood test so we could see what's going on inside your system. Because it's not alcohol that you consumed. So we're trying to figure out what exactly it was. That's why we're requesting a blood test. I talked to your officer and I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I want to talk to someone that understands, but I don't understand you. Maybe you can break it down for me. So, you, have, you did the breathalyzer test, right? Blue in the thing. The results said that it was inconclusive, which means that they couldn't get a reading of yes, no, or whatever it says to give them an answer. The answer was not there. There's a medical issue as to why it's not coming up with an answer. So they want to know if they can do the blood work to do that. But it's an alcohol machine. Correct. So, so that's why we need a blood test to further see exactly what's in your system. No, you said because it was saying, you know, I don't feel comfortable with this. I'm just, I just, because you said it was detecting something else. Correct. But it's an alcohol system. Correct. So there's something else besides alcohol in your system. But it won't be able to detect that. That's so why that's I can't why give them a, a, a for sure answer of it's alcohol, alcohol level because there's something in difference that's not, it's not letting it. Narcan. Correct. The so that might, be why, that might be why the machine came out. But that's why we need to go ahead and... That's, that's why, why they want to check your blood to see what is in the system that I, was causing I, it. You're, yeah, the Narcan probably. Correct, but that's why we want a blood test to go ahead and see. I want that way we can have to. And he just wants to know if you want to have the blood test to say that or not. Yes, so she was unconscious correct. at so, scene. So was given Narcan. So, Mr. Well, this will be my last request. Do you consent to a blood draw? So wait, why am I? I'm here so you can get the drugs in my system. So we can know exactly what's in your system and what may get you. Get you medically clear because you were in a motor vehicle accident, and two, get you a blood test. That way we can see exactly what's in your system because we don't know. And our machine said that it's something else besides alcohol. So that's why we just want to check. This will be my last request. Do you agree for a blood test? So I need a yes, ma'am. For undisclosed reasons, the hospital refused to take the blood test despite Yasmin agreeing to one. Yasmin was taken to another hospital where the test was conducted and then transported back to the county jail for processing. So that might be why that might be why the machine came out. But that's why we need to go ahead and that's, that's why, why they want requesting. to check your blood to see what is in the system that I was causing I, it. You're, yeah, the Narcan probably. Correct, but that's why we want a blood test to go ahead and see. I want, that way we can have to And he just wants to know if you wanna have the blood test to say that or not. Is that clear or not? I, yes, so she was unconscious correct. at so, scene. So was given Narcan. So, Mr. This will be my last request. Do you consent to a blood draw? So, why am I? I'm here so you can get the drugs in my system. So we can know exactly what's in your system and what may get you, get you medically clear because you were in a motor vehicle accident, and two, get you a blood test. That way we can see exactly what's in your system because we don't know. 
and our machine said that it's something else besides alcohol. So that's why we just want to check. This will be my last request, Ms. Yeah, Do you agree for a blood test? So I need a yes, ma'am. In the end, Yasmin faced charges of driving while under the influence of drugs. Alongside that, she received charges for resisting, evading, or obstructing an officer. Prior to this incident, Yasmin had been arrested the month before for driving while intoxicated, which explains the ankle monitor she was wearing during the incident. In the next incident, the person involved left her car completely totaled following a severe crash caused by the influence of drugs. On December 20th, 2023, police officers responded to a distress call at the site of a severe crash. Stephanie, the woman involved, had driven her car into a fence with her daughter on board. Before the officers arrived, Stephanie, who emerged unharmed with her child, had informed SCFD officers that she had faulty tires. Stephanie, uh, she was occupied with her daughter here. Both are denying any injuries. Um, she said she has no medical history, she said. She has bad tires. It's kind of slick. There's a lot of traffic. Cars are going to go through. Did I make a legal clear by? She's not requesting transport for us. There's no lecture hazards with the vehicle. Okay. All right. She's at her house. Right, right there. there. Right where? Right on that street. <laughs> okay. So I can just have him. Uh, my phone got smashed. Okay. So I, I don't have his no, number, so I'm just going to walk over there. Or go to Metro and get a new phone. I'm going to have you hang out here for a little bit, okay? Because i got to do a crash investigation as well. One of the officers at the scene interviews Stephanie to gather details about how the accident happened. Throughout the questioning, she reveals that the car is owned by her husband and maintains her claim that the accident was caused by her supposedly faulty tires. So what happened? So I had an appointment downtown and I was late. I wasn't speeding, but I'd never been down this road before. And I went to go turn, but his tires, this is my husband's truck. His tires are so bald that like the brakes went out. You're saying the tires are bald? So you didn't see the fence that was in front of you or what happened? So why, why, why aren't you, why, how fast were you going? Not fast at all. At all. Some serious damage to the fence. I was not going fast. Right there. Daddy, what's the phone? Camera is 1626. 1626. Don't worry about it. He's like, oh, I'm fine. He's 1613. They have a GPS in my car, and his, this is his truck because mine needs a new radiator. And uh, we have a mobile mechanic, and he's blowing us off, so I'm going to need to. Moments later, Stephanie's husband, Vincent, arrives at the scene of the accident. He's, yeah, we've been together 15 years. He's older than me. <laughs> it's our daughter. It's her biology. Hi! It hit me! What? It ran out in front of me! What ran out in front of you? The fence! You alright, honey? He's fine, babe. Oh, yeah. What? You alright? We are fine. Debbie, everybody alright? Yeah, we're good. What'd you do? I caught down here because I was going downtown, babe. Down here in Drugport. I know. And I didn't see. I mean, I seen it, but I tried to see. Like, you didn't hit any other cars? No, just the fence. So you got this fence, that's it? Yeah, because the front, because you have front wheel drive, and the freaking. Sorry, Dad. Babe, it's not your fault. So that's total. It is. Yeah. So what we got down was the old 97 Ford. Oh, you know what? I don't know. What do you want me to do? Shit happens, buddy. Okay? I know. 
I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to blow up. I'm not going to scream. As long as my baby's all right and you're okay, my baby's all right. The officer calls Vincent aside to question him away from his wife. Vincent reveals that Stephanie had a history of drug problems in the past and she is currently recovering. He also shares a piece of extra information that helps connect the dots about the accident. I don't think so. She's in drug court right now. And she's checking in every day. Every day she's doing a pee test. Well, no, every day she's doing a meeting. And every other Monday, Wednesday, Friday, she does a, um, a drop. It's to me too. To me too. But, I mean, yeah, but she's got a, she has a psychiatrist. No, she does go to a psychiatrist, and I went with her the other day, and he changed her, her medications, and she was like falling asleep a little bit before I left the house. I was going to go crab. I don't know what it's, what it is, but it's too strong. I can tell you that right now. The doctor made a mistake because I told her, I said, whatever you're on. So I tried to wake her up this morning, and she was like really, really hard to wake up. And I said, yeah, she goes, I think the dose he gave me is too strong. And that's her doctor. That's her doctor that gave it to her. I don't think she's under any uh, narcotics, illegal. But I think that the sleeping pills that this doctor gave her are too strong. I do agree. She said the brakes failed. What did he put you on, your doctor? Your sleeping pills. Well, what did you tell me this morning? What's too strong? I'll give me a test. Yeah, well, you might not feel tired. Stephanie is questioned as to whether she had taken drugs or alcohol before driving. She revealed that she had taken some prescriptions earlier in the morning. However, the officer doubts the timing due to her slurred speech and wobbling gestures. Okay, have you had anything to drink today? Any alcoholic alcohol. beverages? You don't drink alcohol? Okay. Have you taken any narcotics in the last 12 hours? Um, when I first got up this morning, I took one diaz diazepine. Diazepine? Yeah, because I'm prescribed three a day. I took one this morning. I took one uh, Subutex with naloxone because that's what I'm prescribed. That's the, like the tongue? Yeah. Like the so sublinguals? You know, because I was on the stronger one. So diazepine and naloxone? Uh -huh. When did you take your naloxone? In the morning, same time I took my diazepine. What time was that? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Have you taken anything else since then? Because it's 4.30 and you still seem a little out of it. You see your eyes are drooping as I'm talking to you. You're having trouble standing straight up. So. No, I'm not having trouble. Okay. okay, well, you're leaning on the car when I first started talking to you. Um, so you have not taken anything since 8 a.m. this morning no, when you sir. took your prescribed diazepine and naloxone. Yeah. Okay. The officer then takes Stephanie through a series of field sobriety tests to confirm if she was driving under the influence. So first test I'm going to do, or the first um, exercise I'm going to do, is called the horizontal gaze nystagmus. So are you wearing glasses or car? Are you wearing contacts? No. Okay. All right. So I'm going to check with. I'm going to check your eyes. I need you to stand with your feet together, with your hands by your side, just like this. Okay. Okay. So you're going to stand like this, hands by your side. Okay. You're going to do that until I tell you to stop. Okay. Stands right here by your side. Okay, you're going to look at the stimulus. Stimulus is going to be my pen, okay? You're going to look right at the tip of my pen. Mm -hmm. Right top? Just right here, yep. Uh -huh. Oh, you want to follow yep, it? Sorry, sorry. Just right here, you're going to follow the tip of my pen. You're just going to keep okay. looking in the eye. Don't turn your head, just use your eyes, okay? Okay. <clears throat> All right, you're going to put your left foot on the line. Put your right heel against the toe of your left foot like this. So left foot on the line, right foot in front like this. Okay. Okay, you're going to put your arms down at your side like this. You're going to stay like that until I tell you otherwise, okay? okay. So do that now. Do the left, right, left. So left foot on the line. Uh -huh. Right foot in front of it with your heel touching the toe. Okay. Then you put your hands down at your side. Just like the other test. So you're just going to stay like that while I read I you the instructions, okay? Balance. Yeah. Okay. One. That's to your side. Oh. 
Hands on your side, heel to toe. Okay, okay. Let me, can I move off the phone? Sure. Midway through the tests, it becomes clear that Stephanie is too out of sorts to scale through them in the right way. She is arrested for driving under the influence, and her husband is informed of the next steps in the case. 1,001, 1,002. Look at your toe. Look at your toe. Oh, I'm sorry. 1,001, 1,002. I can't stand on one leg. Just keep going. If you fall down, just pick it right back up. 1,001, 1,002. Do you see his driver side mirror, or passenger side mirror? Uh-huh. I need you to just turn and face and stand and stare right at that mirror. Uh-huh. So stand just like this. Uh-huh. Do it now, face the mirror. No, you don't have to walk over there. Come here. Oh. This mirror right here. Oh, I can't that. Nope, passenger side. And then put your hands behind your back. You You're under arrest for suspicion of dealing. I want to put your daughter in the truck if you can, but she's going to go with us today, okay? She's going to rest in under something, and she's not able to do any of the tests. She's failing now. I honestly do believe it's that sleep plan. If, if that's the case, then she's also not supposed to be instructed to take sleep control while driving. No, no, it's that's she's supposed to take half dose. I don't know if she took a half dose or no, but I agree. I feel comfortable okay. letting her go when she had a daughter. So I'm not saying she would do her. No, I know. But we're at the breaking point where she hit that fence. She said she's like, she right the last right. minute she drove right through that fence. It looks to me that way too. There's no skid marks here. I mean, she just drove right through the fence. She's, she's unable to do any of the tests. She can't do any of them. I was, she, I was wondering if she, she is. She cannot do them. She's, okay. She's failed at some point in the show. Okay, so, so now, maybe she's in drug court. Yeah. Now she can't get out of the business or nothing. That I don't know. She needs to get with the probation officer. I assume she needs to get with the probation officer. She's not on probation. She's um, in drug court. Okay, so that's fine. Um, let's just get out of the room. Um, DUIs or misdemeanors, so she should have a bond. So Maybe. just yeah, but when you're in drug court, I don't know that that I, that I don't that I don't that I don't know. But I know she was going she, to see. Uh, she did about four or five Danielle. tests for. Her. She can't do anything. No, she's not doing. She's not passing. I, I tell you what, this morning I went in to wake her up because she's in her heart. Yeah. And she just was like a zombie. And she's kind of like, and if it's the medication, you can go to the psychiatrist. Yeah, the doctor told me. explain what's going on, but we, we're not, I'm not a psychiatrist. No. A psychiatrist. I believe it is. So we honestly, can only go based on what evidence we have. Yeah. Honestly, so. I know she had a drug problem, and I know that she's been good since she got arrested twice. The second time she got arrested, I called the doctor. A search of Stephanie's purse turns up a syringe inside. When Stephanie is confronted about it, she makes a shocking claim to defend herself. Hey, can you Mirandize her? Can you get all right? Yeah. I want to just ask her about, about that. Yeah. What's that? I don't know. My husband has a clean. I just found a job. This is. That's an old wallet. This is not your wallet? That's the, it was in the purse that you were wearing. Yeah, but it's my old wallet. Be truthful to us. Yeah, I'm now's the time to be honest. Truthful. Yeah, it was probably in there. And I probably didn't clean that side out. Honestly. Seriously. What's in it? Nothing. So from the last time they, I got arrested. So what do you use that, what's the syringe for then? Why is it in your purse still? When I got a job, my husband I left my at home. You see how it looks though? You get, you get yeah, I see now how it looks, yeah. Another search is conducted, and the police find bottles of Xanax along with other drug paraphernalia and two unopened bottles of alcohol. All these seem to indicate that Stephanie might have lied about not taking alcohol and not doing illegal drugs. Diazepam. Yeah. And what? There's Xanax. There's Xanax. So you have Xanax mixed with what's the yellow one? 
diazepam. So you put the diazepam and the Xanax in there together. Why is that? both benzos. He gave them to me and said, put them in my truck. Well, oh, the last one took you. Which what? Ma'am, you already found a needle. I have some Brillo. Am I going to find any other paraphernalia? Like I said. To be honest with you. I don't think so. It's all in the purse that you were wearing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one Paul, nine and one Paul, eight, copy us, you forty nine. When Stephanie's husband is informed of what was found in her car, he is shocked by the revelation. He also denies putting any of the drugs in Stephanie's purse. In the there is? So That's right. No. There is narcotics? That's correct. Yeah. Legal or illegal? Well, there was a needle in her purse and then a mix of, she says, benzos in her prescription. Did you mix Xanax with her prescriptions? I don't do nothing like that. Okay. Right. She said you did, so. Uh, mix Xanax with her prescription. Yeah, so she has a prescription, and in that prescription, there's other pills. We well, I don't know what she did, but I have, I have Xanax. Okay, well then, I do is have it possible it. that she's taking yeah. your Xanax? It's possible. Okay, because there's pill bottles that are marked for whatever that has a band, but then there's, there's it's mixed with other pills that she says she took from you, or got from you, she and you put the pills in with her stuff. I never put in anything. Yeah. She right. might have got access to my Xanax, okay. which are in my safe. Okay. Um, would but you guys mind waiting by your yeah. truck? Just yeah, not a problem. The officer returns to update Stephanie's husband. During the discussion, it came to light that Stephanie had a relapse six months ago and that she had been arrested twice for drug-related issues. She's been on it. But see, she, she relapsed about six months ago. Her friend died, okay? Went to the funeral. Turns out the girl she went to the funeral with in Northport was a junkie and got her back on drugs. And I've been going through nightmares. I've been going through hell. Um, this isn't the first time we dealt with people doing narcotics behind their significant other's back. If yeah, that's the case, I mean, it's not unusual to, be, to hide something, especially being arrested kids, like that. She's, she's got arrested twice yeah. and now she's a drug court and I thought she was keeping her nose clean I thought between the testing and the indicators in the vehicle you know it's no, just, no, it's all I totally agree with you but um, it, she looks guilty as she's, she's gonna go I'm gonna tow I'm gonna get a tow but if you want to can I tow it to my yard one last conversation is held between Stephanie and her husband before she is hauled off to jail for her actions he promises to bond her off as soon as possible I figured you were going to be crying. I don't know what happened, but they found stuff they shouldn't have found. I know that what's your name threw something under the seat last week when you got arrested. I do know that. But I don't know what, what else. Why'd you buy liquor? Because I bought it for you. Uh, got enough. I don't drink no more. Anyway, listen, being you're on drug court, this is going to throw you out now? No. Well, don't look at it all. I'm sure. Uh, who do I, I don't call? know if it automatically disqualifies. Do I call your you counselor? No. I'm a bond. I don't know if you have a bond. I'll bond you out if I can. For Christmas, I'd like you home. But you got to. But you can't do the test. You failed the sobriety test. Oh my god, I didn't do Babe. You want my sneakers? I got it. I'll give you my sneakers. I just bought a new pair last night. We were shopping. You want sneakers? They're gonna give you slides. No, she's fine. She's blaming the shoes. But oh, oh. This tester break to make you go. Anyway. We, you were supposed to be to see Danielle. Yeah, I was running away. I did. Dude, not now. I can't hear. I can't hear. You were distracted. Well, we'll get through it, you know? You got to just we'll go. Get, yep. We'll get through it. You're we'll good. get through it. You, you know that. I appreciate it. We'll get through it. Thank you, Jeff. I mean, sir, sure, officer. Sorry. Right. Right. We'll, get, we'll get through this, and things are going to change. I don't know what happened. I don't know if going 
Goldman and overdosed you on that stuff or I gave you, over medicated you. It could be that he just gave you too much of that sleeping pill, which still is illegal. It's still a DUI, babe. It's a DUI if, if he gave you a sleeping pill. Okay, all right, pill. we gotta get rolling, so. Okay, so I'm taking, I'm taking everything. I'm going to have him tow it to my yard if I can. I'll get you out if I can, babe. For, it's Christmas. Yeah, show me that's the so 2020 Main Street. I love you. Stephanie was later charged with neglect of a child without great bodily harm, DUI damage to property or person, and drug possession without a prescription for the Xanax found in her bag. One more DUI charge was also added to Stephanie's charges for having her child in the vehicle when the incident happened. This next female dropped off her kid at school while drunk. A Florida woman was stopped by security on suspicion of driving while drunk after she dropped off her niece at school. The school authorities immediately contacted the police, and within minutes, they responded to the scene. Upon meeting the woman, she denied having a drink that day, even though the smell of alcohol in her car was quite strong. The responding officer then conducts an eye-based sobriety test on the woman. The woman fails to follow the steps and claims she is nervous. She is subsequently handed over to a female officer for more tests to confirm if she was driving under the influence. Okay? All right. Oh, what about 
While the test is being administered, the woman changes her mind and refuses to follow through on it, much to the surprise of the female cop. She is immediately placed under arrest on DUI charges. Left foot on the line. Right foot in front. Heel touching your toes, hands at your side. And when I tell you to begin, you're going to take nine heel to toe steps on the line. I'm sorry, when I can't hear you. My knees are shaking too much. Your knees are shaking? You can't do that? Okay, we'll move forward then. Okay, the next one is going to be the one leg stand. You're going to stand I'm with your feet. Them. You're not going to do any of them? Not at all. Okay, sounds good. Go ahead and walk up to my vehicle for me. Tiny wrist. After initially denying that she does not have a medical condition, the woman strangely recants her statement after she is arrested. I'm sorry? Um, I, have, I do have a medical condition. Now you have a medical condition? What's that? Because I asked you that in the beginning. I know, I know. Go ahead and I, turn around and talk to me. It's not diagnosed. I don't have it. That's diagnosed. Um, so you're not on any medication? I did um, Benadryl. Um, I go into an anaphylactic shock and um, high stuff. A search of the woman is done before she is placed in the police vehicle. No incriminating object is found on her. Go ahead and turn around for me. Okay. Probably, he's probably got the park to find a ride. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to move up? Or? Um, yeah, I want to move up. Here, move this way. She's going to move the patrol car, and then we'll put you in the back, all right? It'd be easier so, to get in that way. You want on the other side? I want to get to the jail. They, they allow you calls when you get to the jail, all right? Walk this way, man. Okay, down a little bit, but what happens next? Oh, uh, sir. Um, She'll tell you in a minute, but as far as I know, it seems like you're being arrested for driving under the influence. Okay? If the school's okay with parking the vehicle here, I'm okay with that? Yeah, we'll figure that out. Because he's in there, he's going to have to find a ride home. He's not going there. Either. Not going well, I have her deal, yeah. so. Anything else for me? I'll do a supplement. Yeah, I'll just do a supplement with what she told you as far as when she stopped drinking, how much she had to drink. It turns out that the woman had drunk wine, vodka, and bottles of beer. However, she still maintains that this was all done the previous night. When did you start drinking last night? Seven. 7 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Rough estimate about how much did you have to drink last night? One what? No, wine. A oh, wine? wine? Okay. Um, About how much? Eight ounces, 16 ounces? Eight ounces. Okay. I had beer at the 
probably three, four. And that's it. Was this a draft bottle? No, um, bottle. Bottles. Okay. And three at the bar, and then what? Uh, four, probably three, four at the bar. Okay. And then the wine. And you had more wine after that as well? No, 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 I had that. Okay, so, um, I had wine, I had wine, I got home at 5.30, I had two wine, until seven when the sun broke in, and then, oh, okay, the coffee, and then, um, before this, I could walk, and that's it. All right, just email me your narrative. More information about the woman was obtained from security. The security officer revealed that the woman had been acting strangely when she tried driving out of the school. Uh, I just gotta get your name. I'll use the address for the high school for years. So give me a little bit, I know you called over the radio, but how did you end up? She came in the front, they had a student in the car. Yep. She came in the front, and when they turned around to come back out, I told her, I walked over there, I said, you can't come this way because... She came in the wrong way. Right, that's the entire, you know, everybody goes that way. And I said, just wait here, I have to wait until some of this traffic, because I usually don't let them, but I could, it reeked. Okay. As soon as I went to the front, she turned the wheel and started to come at me, and I was like, whoa, 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 back it up. And then I went back to the car to tell her again, you gotta wait, and she never said a word, she just looked at me blank. Yeah. And he was the one that did all the talking. Yeah. It okay. Raped. That's all I just had you got in contact with her, and that's all. all right, thank well, you. We'll take it. care of the rest. She's uh, on her way to the jail. How bad was she? Uh, she started doing the the good surprise, and then she realized she was not doing great, so she just completely stopped. And she said, "I'm done." Oh, right, she had this blank stare, just like yeah. All of a sudden, whoa. Feel so bad for the daughter. Yep. After being arrested for a DUI charge, the woman was later released on a surety bond. Additionally, a child neglect charge was added. This next female was fond of abandoning her kids at home and going off. It finally got her in trouble. On October 19, 2021, APD officers responded to a 911 call about two very young kids being left alone in their apartment by their mother, 27-year-old Samantha Sanchez. Upon arriving at the location, they met a seven-year-old girl and a nine-month-old boy with the little girl in tears. How's it going? How are you? Doing pretty well. Just the girls already, the girls already Okay. Mom's not back yet? Nope. Okay. Hello, Hi. police department. Hi. What's going on, guys? Is everything okay over here? Okay. We got called out here to check up on you guys. It's okay. Nobody's in trouble. Yeah, nobody's in trouble at all. We just gotta talk to your mom when she comes back home. That's all. It's okay. So we got a call. We've gotten a couple of calls prior to this that they didn't have anyone, um, but. We couldn't get in or check it or anything. How um, long have you guys been getting calls about this? Like how? For, I've been here for a couple weeks and it's been since day one. The little girl is questioned about the whereabouts of her mother, but she claims to have no idea where she went to. However, she discloses an additional piece of information. This is not the first time her mother has left them unsupervised, as she frequently disappears for 20, 30 minutes at a time to run errands. Where is your mama? Do you have a phone number for her so we can give her a call? And her name's Samantha. How often do would you say that you take care of your baby brother? How long does that usually take? Do you know? It takes 
20 minutes to what? 20 minutes to 30. Okay. How long, when did she leave today? It's been about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Honey, there's nothing for you to be upset about. There's nothing for you to be upset about, okay? Your mom made a bad choice by leaving you here. She did. She shouldn't have left you here by yourself. You're too young to be here alone, especially with a nine-month-old. Nothing. We're going to talk to her, though. That's not fair. It's not fair for her to be mad at you, and I'm going to tell her that. A call is placed to Sanchez, and she is asked to return home. She arrives approximately 15 minutes later, but immediately starts to defend herself and yell at her kids. Hello, this is Officer Sean Delaney with the Albuquerque Police Department. Is this Samantha Sanchez? Well, I'm trying to get a hold of you because uh, I'm at your apartment with your unattended children, and I was wondering where you were at. Okay, how long are you planning on being gone? Okay, we'll see you shortly. How far out are you? Okay, that's a ways off. We'll see you when you get here. What's that? What do you mean? Yeah. Why are you here? Because you left your children unattended. They're fine. Yeah, but they're a little young. And so my daughter knows the drill. She knows to stay home. And you can mind your business. And yeah. I could mind my business if there wasn't a violation of There's not the a violation of a law. You just need to mind your business. Old, no, seven so year who old the f***? Who the f***? You know what you're doing. Get away from my house. Okay, there's an officer inside your apartment. Is there? Yes, ma'am. Did you call the cops on me? No. Frank, back to you three. We're walking up to the door. What the f*** is this? for? Excuse me. You can, like, take your tone down. So house. you don't need to yell at they're your kids house. because you left them here. Do you understand they're, that? She, they're taking care of. They know better. They know better than yes, what? Yes, they know. They, they always stay home. Can you and I talk outside, please? No, you can mind your business. Okay. I have the right point, to refuse. This is, a, this is a child abuse I have investigation. The, no, okay, it's not an that? abuse investigation. Yes. They're not even been abused. Yes, it is no, an abuse. Not. This is a they're neglect not. They're not investigation. Abuse. They're not abuse. Not Can you, like, come out? Go in the... While being verbally combative, Sanchez inquires to know who called the cops but gets no answer. She continues to downplay her actions and soon gets a consequence for that. Can you come on? Because I'm going to talk. Didn't. Right, who called the cops here. on me? First off, I want to know who called the cops on me. First, First of all, there's a few things we need to work out before you decide who, which of your neighbors ratted on you. Yes, okay? who snitched on me? I want to know who it was first. And then second of all... So you don't see a problem with leaving your children No, because in this they've apartment. been here all the time. They do this all the time. And That's they're taking care of. So you're upsetting her and making her cry? Mm -hmm. and just walking down no, you can close my door and get out of my house. That's no, what you that's can. A criminal investigation. No, it's not. It's not. Nothing's been criminally done. Actually, this is no, a crime. it's not. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave, sir. So, um, you can like. So, are you, are you requesting that uh, CYFD takes your children? Is that what you're requesting? <laughs> and if CYFD takes my f***ing um, children, I will be suing the officers and everything. So right, so do you right wanna, now, this is child abuse. Okay? Do you want a what lawsuit? You've done here or do you want to leave abuse. me alone? Take the lawsuit. Yeah. Take the lawsuit. Okay, Absolutely. then get. So, are you wanting to go to jail? Is that what you're wanting? I'm not even doing anything wrong to my kids. My kids are taken care of. Okay. Everything's so, fine. So here's the thing. You're making her upset right Come now. Come here. Okay? You can talk to her for a second, but we, need to, we need to sort this out. And leave them out of the no, you left your kids alone. They're and that's why fine. We're here. They have everything. They are fine, officer. Yeah. Yes, we're fine. Why are you yeah, picking you on us? Us? Oh, yeah, I guess if she's not going to cooperate. What is wrong? Okay. Why? No, so I here, don't want to be under we can, arrest. We can no. either have a conversation about this civilly, or you can go in the back of a police car. Do you understand how that works? Okay, well, let's talk, and you need to... Okay. Dock your you need voice to walk down away about so that you're not upsetting her so much. I don't need to walk away from my doorway, sir. As officers were arresting her, Sanchez decided to resist the officers by pulling away, resulting in them taking her to the ground. Go ahead and put your hands no, behind your back. No, I want to talk. Put your hands behind your back. Don't pull away from us. Go to my car. Hurry, go to my car and tell Thurman to come get in the van. The baby. Hurry. I need another cup. This is ridiculous.
ridiculous. You're ridiculous. Why don't you mind your business? Stop pulling away from us. Stop fighting with us. Get off of me now. Get off. Get on your stomach. Oh my God. Get off of me. Let go of this stuff. Look at this is child abuse by living him in there like that. Get off of me. Get off. Let me up. Let me up now. Get off of me. Get off of me. Even after Sanchez was handcuffed, she continued to resist the officers verbally, and when that wasn't enough, she used her legs. However, the officers quickly restrained her from kicking. Let me up. Where's the child? Stop kicking the police! No! Get the f***ing out! You're hurting my arm! If there's anything on my Sir, arm, are you involved in this? I will sue. I'm not accepting it. Get the f*** off of me! Okay, just give us some just space, Just give us okay? a second, okay? Baby! Baby! Just stay down there, sir. I'm fine, I'm not even Okay. Baby! Baby! Where's the young child? Okay, is she safe? Stop fighting with me. I'm 300 pounds, bitch. I can do whatever the You're pinching me? Are you serious? Yes. Wow. Get off of me! Cooperate with us, please. If you stop Fucking attacking us, shit. if you stop attacking us, we'll get off of you. I said get the f off me. Now, I can't breathe. Get then you off. need to stop resisting us. Stop fighting Burn with in. us. Do you need anything from me? Burn me. Burn me. Burn me. Children is with somebody over there in the parking lot. Okay, the baby's in there. If you want to grab him, that's fine. Leave my kids alone! Don't touch my kids! I don't give you permission. Go! Okay, yeah, I'm okay with that. Let me up! Stop fighting with us. Stop fighting with us. I said get up. And I said stop fighting with us. I said get the off me. Stop fighting with us. Get off me! Oh my toes! Stop pulling away from me. We're on the east side of the pool. Let me up. Ow. 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 Let me up. Let me up. Ow. 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 My leg. Stop pulling away from me. You understand that? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Stop it. Get out of me. Stop grabbing me. Get the f*** off me. You f***ing kid. This is ridiculous. You're ridiculous. Unreal. You're unreal. Unreal. Bitch. Mind your business. This is our business. No, it's not. Now you have to go to jail for battery on a police officer. I don't give a f what I gotta do. And I'm not cooperating. So there's that. Just to remind you, you're being recorded. Turtle, Everything's being recorded here. You understand that? I don't give a f what's recording, you little you are bitch. Under arrest. You're hurting you my arm! Huh? You need to stop pulling away from us. Go to my car. Tell my homegirl I'm getting arrested. Tell her that she can stay the night in my house. I give her permission. Get off of me. Bro, my f***ing arm is hurting. Get off. All I ask is to get off this dog shit. Get off of me. What did she say? There's dog shit on me. Come on, get off. Let me up. One of the officers reaches out to dispatch to give an update about the situation amid continued screams and fake tears from Sanchez. Let me Maybe up. We're still here with the subjects. She's still fighting with us, but we got her in handcuffs. We got a couple other subjects around us too, but they're uh, they're sitting back. There's dog shit right here. Can I please get up? Please. Where is it? Right in front of me. I want to get off the floor. Okay. If you stop wiggling around, we'll move you away from then it. Get okay. Me up. Did you hear her last question? Please just let me up. I can't hear anything with this. It's, it's awful. Yeah. Ow. My arms. Everything hurts. Come on, let me up. Yeah, we're just trying to negotiate. Let me up. Stop. Well, then let me up. I keep telling you, you stupid ass. Don't you hear me? To let me up. Stop moving. No. 
Can you break anything on me? I will sue you. Let me up. Let me up. Stop moving. I said no. I have the right to move. So, guy that was kind of bothering us walked away, so that's. Uh, what do you think? We're going to have to get her in a car, but it's going to be. Uh, we're going to have to drag her. No, no dragging, please. Yeah, I can get walk. a press. I can walk, I promise. I can walk. Oh, my arm. My arm. It's Samantha. Samantha? Please, let me up, officers. You got to cooperate. I know, but let me get up and I'll cooperate. Stop. Okay. Well, then let me up. Bro, come on. Stop pitching me! I'm not even pitching you, you stupid ass. My hands far away from you. Let me out! My arm is hurting! Oh. 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 Turtle! I can't breathe! I don't want to get out! Stop moving! Shut the f up! You're ugly as f Actual leg restraints are then placed on Sanchez to prevent her from kicking out once again. My arm! I can't breathe! Oh. Let me out! Oh. 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 Here, get both of them. Hold on. You can... Oh. Oh. Why are you guys so mean? Let me up off this nasty floor! <laughs> oh, why are you pulling it off of me? Oh, why is this hurting me? Oh, this one's hurting my arm! It's not moving! Hey, hey, listen to me, okay? Listen to me. I'm gonna loosen it. You better let you better comply, okay? I am! Oh, come on! You guys are wrong! No, he came at me the wrong way. Let me go. Oh, let me go. That hurts. Listen, you're yelling and screaming is not making anything better. Well, just leave me alone. I wasn't even doing anything wrong. So right now we're past that point, okay? Let me go. Take some deep breaths. Let me go. Sanchez is eventually lifted from the gravel floor and escorted to the APD car ahead of being driven to the Metropolitan Detention Center, MDC, for booking. However, she makes this process quite difficult for the cops. Uh, I hate you guys. What's that, okay? No. I can't even stand up. So what's going to happen next? Uh, I thought we were going to have to at least before I bring him to I want my baby daddy to have my phone. And you guys need to stop minding your business. I'll just find her to go away. I'll stay here with their property. Oh, these things are too tight. I'm not walking until they're looser. Well, we can't do it until we get the car. Okay? I can't walk. They're too painful. Samantha, your daughter wants to know if she can have her phone. said yes. Can you loosen them? They hurt! And I want my slippers! I'm not walking on these floors. They're drug infested. Samantha, please let me talk to my baby daddy. My daughter's dad's right there. Let me talk to him. 
No, I want to talk to you. You get to us. No. Get to you. We can stand here all day. Please, just let me talk to my baby daddy. Please. We already loosened them up for you. I want to talk to my yeah, baby daddy because I need to tell him something. Get in the car because you're going to go anyway. <laughs> Please take your arm off me. That's not how it works, okay? Okay. Okay, all of you and me. You guys don't even do your job. Why are you here for me when this whole place is infested with drugs? Like, why? I just walked to that one. No, I'm going to that one. No, uh, so she asked the security to pick this up and give it to her baby daddy. Um, I picked up her ear. Can I please so talk to my daughter's dad? Yeah. From the cop car? Yeah. The kids are in the front office right now. Okay. If you guys want to no, go, I'll I want my daughter's dad to have my daughter. Okay. You got to handle all the semantics with time. Uh, you guys don't even Stop. let me talk. Yeah, Stop playing no, because you guys already want to use force on me anyway. You two are the ones that tackle me. Man, how does that feel? Make me disappointed. Let me talk to my daughter's dad. My son's dad is an NPC. Well, let's first get in here. Let me talk to him now. I can't do anything. How are you going to expect someone to jump in? I was involved, so let me just do everything. Sanchez was hit with a slew of charges, including battery on an officer, attempted battery on an officer, abandonment of a child, and no driver's license. She ultimately took a plea deal that dropped the battery on an officer and no driver's license charges in return for pleading guilty to the attempted battery and abandonment of a child charges. Six months later, Sanchez found herself in much bigger trouble. During a fight with her boyfriend, she shot her little boy's toes off, leading to another arrest. She was subsequently charged with two counts of child abuse and she pleaded guilty to both charges. Despite Sanchez initially facing nine years behind bars for the charges, she was ultimately given a suspended sentence of one year in jail and five years of probation. For the next case, this female discovers the consequences of neglecting her child. On April 22, 2021, residents living on County Road, Bunnell, notified the Flagler County Sheriff's Office about children's screams coming from one of the residences in the area. Deputies swiftly attended to the reports, and upon arriving, they were confronted with the loud cries of a young child from the residence. Are they both your children? Officers make contact with the mother, but she immediately downplays their screams, saying the kids were only playing. So there's like 10,000 choking hazards in there that they're locked in that room and nobody's in there supervising them? As they're screaming for the whole neighborhood to call us? And this apparently has not been the first time from all your neighbors calling in, saying that they hear this multiple times throughout the week. Do you have an idea with you? While investigating, deputies observed more trash scattered along the floor of all the bedrooms, just like they saw outside of the home. They also noticed feces smeared around and numerous cockroaches. 
Meanwhile, the children were wearing dirty clothing, and one of them had their diapers not changed. This leads officers to intensify their questioning of the mother. However, she gives a silly excuse to explain why the kid was left unattended, and tries to defend the trash scattered around and within the house. When was the last time you even changed their diapers? As it's sagging there, probably full. seem to be a safe environment for your children? Yeah, it's completely safe. It's just they're very, very loud and vocal. And since both of the windows are open. This is a safe environment, huh? So I'm not enthused so far, to be honest with you. Notice the cockroaches on the walls. Yeah. Um, and you can see the. So the screen, the screen here. was in there. Yeah, the screen was in, but you see how they have the holes and so forth. They're putting their fingers through, and I mean, I feel like you could easily push that out if you actually tried. Okay. Um, it took her several minutes to see well, a good amount of time to answer the door. Um, when she answered the door, she was like raggy and tired. Was baby with her when she answered? No. So she was being empty. Was asleep in the bed. Um, she seemed tired, groggy, kind of out of it, like she just awoke it. And they were banging on the door that was locked from the out, so other side. Out. Just with an empty juice cup. Mom, mom, mom. With an empty cream. Juice cup. Juice cup. Mm -hmm. Oh, juice cup. I was like, what's a juice cup? Okay. And screaming, mommy, mommy, shoes, shoes. And just loud screeching. The mother was identified as Christina Co while the father, who later arrived at the scene, was identified as Gilbert. The couple were then arrested based on the state of the house, which was deemed unsafe for the children. Do you want to explain or... <laughs> um, So based on our findings tonight, okay, um, we do have probable cause to make the arrest on both of you. has obviously custody of the kids and they're going to be staying with your sister or cousin mm -hmm. is that what it is um hopefully you guys are able to get out tomorrow you can get back to your baby yeah um, with what we have no money we have no i, I have no family i understand i understand but we we have probable cause to make the arrest yeah, we, we don't we don't tolerate this all right that the conditions they're in is unsafe for them in general completely it's unsatisfactory it's unsafe. I know you're upset about your kids, but you hitting your head against that glass is not going to do anything. You have three little ones that care about you that are waiting for you. Yeah. So let's just get this over with. Okay, we're gonna go get you cleared at the hospital. If you don't want to get any treatment or anything, you'll just have to tell them that. I don't want to go to okay. the hospital. Okay, but we have. There, you just tell them you don't want to see them, and they'll just tell piece of paper, and we leave. But according to our policy, because you just had I'll a. I'll fill it out now. I don't, don't want to go there at all. I hate Advent. Right. They treat me like shit. Okay, perfectly fine. It's not your decision. It's ours. Okay, our policy states you're gonna have to go. If you sign out AMA, that's not a problem. You don't even have to get out of the car. That's not a problem. <laughs> Okay, at the end of the day, this is what is happening. I'm very sorry to be the one to tell you that, but there's no decision here. There's no choice to be made. This is what's happening. Please do not hit your head against my partition. All it's going to do is hurt and damage my car. Okay? I don't care if it hurts. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns at this point in time? No. Great. Close the door. Let's go. All right. The children, ages 2, 1, and 7 days old, were handed over to the Department of Children and Families on the night of the arrest. Upon their recommendation, all three kids were removed from the home and placed in the custody of a family member. Meanwhile, Co and Bridewell were transported to the Sheriff Perry Hall Inmate Detention Facility. They were both charged with three counts of felony child neglect without great bodily harm. Thanks for watching. Until next time.